Let's talk football. Let's talk spring practice. Let's talk storyline. Early enrollees were most excited about who could make a difference this year. Let's get off basketball for a second and talk some Badgers football. Let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, Badger fans? Welcome to Locked On Badgers, your team every single day. Thank you so much, as always, for tuning in, for helping us build this amazing, incredible community. Um, and I, I cannot tell you how much I appreciate your time. Today's episode is brought to you by Nissan. This episode is brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little bit further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Take the Nissan Rogue, Pathfinder, or Armada. Go find your next big adventure. Check them out today at NissanUSA.com. All right, so listen, we've had basketball overload for a while, which this it's probably fine if the basketball team's doing really well. It hasn't been lately. I, it's been a bit of a struggle. I want to talk football. I, we're still going to talk basketball. Obviously, a lot of the season or some of the season still to go. The season's not over. I want to talk football. I want to talk spring practice. I want to talk things that are exciting to me right now. And losing, uh, losing seven and nine in basketball is not exciting to me right now. Um, so I want to start here with storylines, spring storylines that I'm, I, I'm most excited about and most intrigued about that I think are the most important right now. Uh, and we're just going to start with one. It's the quarterback play. It's Tyler Van Dyke. To me, it's Tyler Van Dyke. And it, it's nothing else is even close because that that this team is going to go as Tyler Van Dyke goes to some degree. We saw it last year with Mordecai, right? You brought in this, this transfer quarterback, the hype was there, and then he, a lot of things he did well. Obviously, he, he moved the ball with his feet, a uh, tremendous leader, but he wasn't the passer we needed to be, and it really limited us. Now, Tyler Van Dyke comes in. What can we get out of spring? Well, if you think back to last year, and it it is just a practice, right? The spring game that you're going to, but throughout the course of the spring, um, there were some turnover concerns, right? There were some things that if, if you really wanted to pay attention, you could say, ah, Maybe there's something there that we need to put the brakes on a little bit. I'm really excited to see from, from the practices that uh, the media is able to go to, from the reports, just from people I can talk to. I really want to see how Tyler Van Dyke looks in this offense, how Phil Longo plans on using him. What are we seeing? Are, are there a lot of interceptions? Is there a practice where Rico gets three picks again, right? Or is he pushing the ball downfield, right? Is he... Um, extending plays is he making smart decisions again what is the I know we haven't talked about Tyler Van Dyke for a while and Badger fans are not intimately familiar with him what is the book on Tyler Van Dyke NFL arm NFL size bad decision making right will lock on to a receiver um, not great intermediate sometimes so I really want to see how he is in those areas maybe Longo can get a little bit more out of him um, is he pushing the ball downfield is he is he creating offense like it, it's high time for a badger quarterback to come in and actually help elevate the offense and not just either be a part or be the anchor that drags it down quite frankly and that's been like that for too long it's been like that for several years at this point going back before luke fickle it's time for a quarterback to come in and elevate this a little bit can tyler van dyke to some degree elevate it if you want my opinion i i think it's there i think the tools are there but I think you also have to have some caution, right? This is a quarterback who's coming to Wisconsin because, you know, his film hasn't translated to the NFL. He's trying to put more good film out there for the NFL, for his future. So this is a guy who's coming in um, with question marks, but coming in with real physical tools that the NFL covets, that the next level covets. I want to see what he does. I want to see how it looks. I want to see what people watching him say. I think it's the number one storyline by far. How is Tyler Van Dyke integrating in this offense? What does it look like? Are the turnovers there? Listen, if he makes it through spring and, and we're not reading about um, bad decision-making, two or three turnovers, a couple passes over the middle that were tipped because they were thrown too hard, I think it's a huge sign and a really good one. So that's storyline number one for me. I think to, that's the obvious one. Number two is the defense line for me. Um, as For as much as the quarterback is going to carry the offense, you know, he's going to provide the, the power to that offense. The defense line – to me, is going to be the barometer by which this defense is judged. I think the linebackers are going to be better. They're certainly going to be more athletic. I like the secondary to be a tick better. I like the younger players coming in. I like Rico coming back. Hunter Waller's coming back. I think safety's pretty deep. It all comes back to the defense line. 
And the defense line, I don't think there's a scenario where it's really good this year. I don't think it's an upper tier Big Ten defense line, almost no matter what. But can it be middle of the pack Big Ten, right? Or is it going to be below that? I, I think there's one or two games that are going to flip depending on that answer. Whether it can be a, a competent Big Ten defense line that's not a weakness, I think you win a couple more games. Or it hasn't taken a jump. You're not getting much disruption. And now the linebackers are getting washed out. I think defense line this year is its honestly probably my biggest question mark. It's the biggest thing I'm worried about. I, I, in this spring, I want to see how the new pieces look. What does Elijah Hills look like? Right, That's a guy coming over from Albany. That's a graduate transfer. Can he come in and jump right into the two deep? What does Jamel Howard look like? Right, we, we didn't see him last year. He got hurt a little bit early. I've heard really good things. Like I've heard impressive things talking to a guy like Brady Collins. Brady Collins says he looks really good. Like he, he's had a good off season. He's put on good weight. Like he, he's reshaped his body. What does that look like on the field? I He's such a big part of this because he gives you that physical inside presence that we don't have anywhere else in the roster. He gives you that type of Keanu Benton potential that, you know, two offensive linemen are going to have to anchor down and move him. He is one of my most exciting players this 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 spring to watch and check in on and see what the reports are because he's the type of guy that can transform that defense if he's ready to play. I want to see what Ernest Willer looks like, right? The highly regarded four-star early enrollee defense lineman. Wisconsin doesn't get defense linemen like him often. He's got to play right away because the cupboard is a little bare there. Can he come in and give you 15 good snaps a game? If he can do that, like that's depth, that's that's – uh, impact depth that you need on this team. I want to see what some of the returning guys look like. Has James Thompson taken another little step? So to me, defense line, because I am just really pretty worried about it. But I think if that clicks, I think the rest of the defense can be really pretty good. Um, I just don't know what we're going to get out of the defense line. So I'm really excited to see that. Um, and my last question, our last thing I'm really excited to see, going back to defense to the linebackers, right? I, I can't wait to, to see what lineups they're using, what the two deep looks like. I'm really excited about a couple of the, the early enrollee freshmen with Highberger, with Lafayette. Um, you have Cheeks coming in, Tackett Curtis. You have Thomas coming in, Leon Lowry. I, I'm very excited for that whole group. I want to see where people are lining up. I want to see how it looks. I want to see who's flashing. I want to see who's in the two deep. I want to see which of those early enrollee freshmen are potentially getting reps and what they look like. Because I think there's a lot of potential with both of those guys. Um, so, yeah, those are my three big storylines. My bonus one is receiver. Um, I, I just think there's so many interesting pieces there to track on. Like, again, we haven't talked football in a while. You go back and look at the receiver room. What, is, what does CJ look like in year two? How does Tretch look um, coming up in a hopefully healthy offseason, getting a few reps late? Uh, what does he look like now? Is he getting more reps? I think if he is, that's really interesting. Tyrell Henry, the Michigan State transfer. Quincy Burroughs, who... Again, I've, I've said this a couple times on the show. There is real interesting measurables with Quincy Burroughs. What does Chris Brooks look like? Chris Brooks is a really physical specimen, like a real physical specimen that a year ago was generating some waves and then he got hurt. I'll tell you, there's a couple bodies in that receiver room that are unique. Uh, Chris Brooks is one of them. Really, really big, strong, physical. Uh, CJ Williams is one. Quincy Burroughs is one. We know about Will Pauling. Tretch is one. I'm really excited to see how that receiver room starts to to shake out. Uh, do people separate themselves or is it kind of muddled still coming out of, of spring? So, yeah, those are I had three, but I couldn't resist talking about receivers. I'm um, very excited about the quarterback, the defensive line. Really intrigued about the defensive line. I uh, can't wait to see the linebackers and a bunch of bodies in that receiver room, I think, are really interesting and worth tracking. So lots going on here. I can't wait to start being into more football. The calendar is ticking around. We're getting closer. And honestly, we need it right now with the way basketball is going. So obviously, we'll keep talking basketball, but that's what I'm excited about. Let me know what you're excited about checking out in spring, uh, who play, which players are which positions you're most into here. We're going to take a quick break for the, our friends of the show. Come back. I want to talk about the early enrollees specifically and which early enrollees in this class are most helped by getting here early, who can play this year. Um, a couple of players I didn't talk about who I think can play roles this year, partially because they're getting to campus early. That's a huge part of that freshman group. All right. We're going to come back with that, but first, a quick break for our friends of the show, new friends of the show over at Nissan Motors. Um, if you're the type of driver, and I know you are because you're listening to Locked On Badgers. Like, we got real people here. If you're the type of driver that likes to push things just a little bit further, if you ever wonder what adventure is around the next corner, and you're looking around the next corner, what's there? Nissan's going to help you get there. Our friends over at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next 
level. The 2024 Rogue, perfect for city drives and great escapes. If you're one of those people, you're doing the work in the city, but on the weekends, man, you're a weekend warrior. You want to get out there, get down to business, get that campsite set up, go kill something, bring it back to the fire. The Nissan Rogue is right there for you. Class exclusive uh, Google built-in is always up updating your maps, everything that you need as personal assistant. The 2024 Rogue is a perfect mid-size crossover for your next adventure. They also have the Pathfinder, room up to eight people. So you and your buddies, that's a basketball team with three guys off the bench. 6,000 pounds of towing, tow whatever toys you want. Uh, take the Nissan Rogue, the Pathfinder, or the Armada. Go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. That's NissanUSA.com. Find your next big adventure in whatever you need to do because Nissan has you covered. All right, we're going to say come back and let's let's talk about um, some of these early enrollees here. And talk a little bit about the ones that I think are most likely to get playing time this year and why it's, it's so good that they're here early. Um, we're going to start with Ernest Willard Jr., Right. So there's a bunch of kids in this class that are enrolling early, which I, I, I'm always in kind of in awe of because I barely graduated high school. Like I almost needed a little bit more time to get through. I, I think I've said it on the show. I graduated second to last in my high school class. So people graduating early like blows my mind because in high school, I, I, I was not about that life. Um, but there is a big chunk of this class that is graduating early, uh, starting with Ernest Willard Jr. Right. We talked about him when I said, this is one of my big positional groups I'm interested in. Ernest Willard Jr. getting here early is enormous, right? Getting him working with the new coach, getting him in the strength and conditioning program, getting him fired up, getting him learning the defense, getting him reps, getting him going against grown college guys because they need him this year, period. Full stop. This team needs Ernest Willard Jr. this year. And it's a testament to how – talented he potentially is right you look at the offer list you look at the recruiting rankings you look at the size physically he looks developed enough to play it's also unfortunately a testament to what's in the cupboard like defense line wasn't good enough last year you saw it with the rushing stats you saw it with the inability to generate pressure it needs to get better um and that was a consistent issue last year he needs to play right away i think they need him right away not not in a big role because if you try to give him too much i think he's going to wear down but if you can get him third down, third and seven, you bring him in to help rush the passer. I think you can get 10, 20 snaps, maybe a game from him. And that's huge, right? That, that Those are reps taken off James Thompson's plate, right? Those are reps taken off Jamel Howard. Well, they're not playing the same spot, but you get the point. Those are reps taken off someone else's plate. And <clears throat> him being here early is, it's absolutely huge. So I'm excited for that. Uh, Grant Steck. Love Grant Steck. Uh, I've said it a couple times. He's one of my three or four favorite guys in this class. I think I have him in my top five for sure. Um, I'd have to go back and look at my list, but I love Grant Steck. Physically, this dude's ready to play, like right now. Um, six, 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 two fifty. 250. And I've talked to him a little bit since he's been on the show. He's gotten bigger, stronger, faster. He can split out wide. He can catch the ball. <clears throat> he's coming into a position without a ton of established depth. Um, you're looking at a spot where Tucker Ashcraft played right away last year. And Grant Steck is coming in as kind of a more advanced version, in my opinion, of Tucker Ashcraft. A little bigger, a little more natural. I think he can fight for a spot right away. I really, really do. Because there's not a ton of depth there. And he is a big physical presence. I think he can give you something in the red zone with his size, potentially his ability to split out wide, high point balls. Um, and he's a physical guy. Like on his high school film, he is a really, really good blocker. Now that's a lot different than doing that in the Big Ten, obviously, but he has that in his bag. He has that in his repertoire, and he's big enough to do it. So I think him getting here early is a big deal. That was one of the priority targets from day one for this, this coaching staff for Phil Longo. They went after him hard. The previous staff went after him hard. So I, I'm, I think that's a big one, getting him here early, getting him those reps. I think you can see him in the two deep this year. Uh, here's here's kind of an interesting one to me. Getting a Tuca coming in early, all the talk – I shouldn't say all the talk – Right. But the vast majority of the talk with this 2024 recruiting class on the running backs, it's been Darian Dupree. It's been Dylan Jones, Darian Dupree, Dylan Jones, Dylan Jones, Darian Dupree. And meanwhile, those dudes aren't on campus yet. Getting a Tuca is. And I've talked to people um, kind of on and off in the program. They like a Tuca a lot. They, they don't necessarily look at it as like Dupree and Jones. And then this guy, it's they kind of look at it as all three. And Atuka is physically ready, runs with a really compact style. This is a running back room right now where you look, you see an oft-injured Ches Malusi who's healthy. That's awesome. He's had struggles staying that way, 
right? You see Nate White, who couldn't get reps last year. Katie Akimeli, a converted guy. Um, Acker, you know, a guy who, who had spurts last year, but I don't know if he's a natural guy. Atuka, uh, and Tywee Walker, obviously the Oklahoma back, but Atuka could fight for some reps here. He, he really could, and he's got a head start on those other two freshmen, which I think is really interesting for him. Uh, Thomas Heiberger, there's a guy who I think is playing this year. I, I think it's special teams, but getting him in early, I think, is, is really interesting and a big deal. Brady Collins raves about him, right? The the big hulking kind of linebacker out of South Dakota. Huge, excuse me, huge frame. Um, this is a guy that Brady Collins is really excited about. I think getting him in early is a big, big deal. Kevin Haywood, um, getting him here. Again, you look at our offensive line, there's a lot of moving spots. The earlier you can get offensive linemen into strength and conditioning, the earlier you can start to acclimate, acclimate him to that. Yeah, I think it's a huge deal. He has tremendous upside. Kevin Haywood has NFL-type upside, one of the top-rated recruits of this class. Getting him on campus, getting him working with Brady, getting him already putting on good weight, it's hard for freshmen, but he's the type of guy that can get into the two deep. I think when you start looking at our depth chart and really some of the consistency issues we've had all over the map. So Kevin Haywood getting here early loves him to make the jump. And the last one I'm going to point to that I could see maybe playing this year, although I think it's less likely now, um, unless he's a special teams guy with all the transfer linebackers. Um, Lafayette is here early as well. Prior to this influx of Leon Lowry, Cheeks, uh, Tackett, Thomas, I thought Lafayette was going to play this year, almost guaranteed. Uh, I don't know if it's going to happen now, but it I can almost guarantee it wouldn't have happened if he's not getting here early. So him getting in early, I think, gives him the opportunity to compete for some pass rushing reps. I think that's where he could be used right away. Because even with those transfers, I think Lafayette has a bit of a burst that very few people on this roster have. Now, Lowry's bigger, bigger frame. Thomas and Tackett are more physically developed. Uh, Cheeks is unique athletically. You still got some incumbents coming back, some some players on last year's team coming back, obviously Peterson and, and Chaney. It's a loaded, loaded room. And – I think the odds are definitely against a guy like Lafayette cracking that now, but him being here early gives him opportunity because he has unique physical tools. Um, so that's kind of the group of players enrolling early freshmen that I could, I could kind of look at and say, yeah, there, there could be a role here. And the fact that they're here early is a big, big deal. Uh, the other one I want to point out, he's not going to play this year, but maybe Matt Toyer, getting the quarterback to enroll early, getting him early reps, getting him involved in the offense, getting him acclimated to college life. That is such a big deal. And so the fact that Med Toyer is here, are not here, like I'm in Connecticut, right? But the fact that he's in Madison, um, he's going to participate in, it it's, gives you a leg up, right? You're able to jumpstart your, your progress as a quarterback. And quarterback's all about reps, right? It's all about mental reps. It's all about being ready. It's all about the more you can get, the more you can absorb, the better quarterback you're going to be. It's the most sort of cerebral position in football, right? So the more reps you can get, the more time you can get with Longo, the better. Um, he's again, another player with a tremendously, a tremendous upside. So getting him here early, I think is a big deal as well. All right. So that's kind of my group of early enrollees. I'm excited about that. There's more early enrollees on campus, but that's the group that I think has potential to maybe make some noise, um, potentially this year. So that's, I, uh, it's, it's a great group. They were able to get a bunch of them to enroll early. All right. We're going to take a quick break. Then we are going to come back with a, a few basketball comments from Twitter, uh, kind of wrap up that Illinois loss uh, snapshot of where I'm at with some of these comments. But first, a break for our friends of the show over at FanDuel. FanDuel remains the number one source for all your sports betting needs and information. FanDuel.com slash locked on. If you want to put any money, and please do it responsibly, but on Badgers futures, baseball's about to start up, NBA's going on. Um, it's all there over at FanDuel.com slash locked on. It's a great new offer. New customers can bet $5 to get 150 in bonus bets, win or lose. That's bonus bet money, win or lose with this great offer over at fanduel.com slash lockdown. Again, it's a simple user interface. It's easy to use. The payouts are really quick. You're not going to beat it. They have all the sports, all the type of actions you like in a website that is incredibly easy to use, really fast to do what you want to do, nice and simple, just like we want it. Fanduel.com slash lockdown, fanduel.com slash lockdown. Make every moment more. Fanduel is the official sports betting partner of the Lockdown Network, of the NBA, and of the National Football League. All right. Let's, let's get a couple comments here. I wanted to just pull a couple things from Twitter. Again, coming off that Illinois loss, I know people are bummed. I'm bummed. Um, let's pull a couple things up here from Twitter. Uh, let's see. This is from Real Lucas 345 It seems like even those who have been the biggest defenders of great guard throughout the, the years have lost their patience. It's starting to feel like that. Uh, it's starting to feel like that. And I, I don't know if I could – 
I, and I, I don't want to sway them, right? I'm getting there. Like it, it is a frustrating time to see this team kind of tailspin. Um, yeah, no, I hear you. I hear you, man. I, I, I think it's true. Uh, Demise said, Greg Hart didn't make a single adjustment defensively in this game. That killed us. I wanted to put this comment up, not to talk about this game specifically, because we, we, we did talk about this. We beat into the depth. I want to talk bigger picture. Why does Greg Gard not make adjustments? Why do we think that happens? Like, is it a stubbornness thing? Is it a, um, there, listen, there are coaches who will say, I'm not going, I'm going to make you adapt to me. Like I believe in my, my scheme, my system. I believe in our prep work. I believe in my players that we shouldn't have to make adjustments. We should just execute better. I don't know if that's where Greg Gard's mindset is. I can tell you if it is, I think it's a mistake. I think there's, there's always going to be something that doesn't work quite perfectly. Like you draw things up in practice, but what does Mike Tyson, what did Mike Tyson always say? A plan is great until you get punched in the mouth. And then you do have to make some type of adjustments. I, it is one of the, I think the biggest valid criticisms of Greg Gard. And I don't know where it comes from. Like, I think it's, I think some of it comes from Bo Ryan, right? Bo Ryan wasn't the biggest adjustment guy. And I think so much of Greg Gard is pulled from Bo Ryan. And hey, that's a hell of a guy to pull from. Right. Like that's a Hall of Fame guy. I mean, he should be. We'll see if he is this year, but but he can't quite do a great Bo Ryan does because Bo Ryan was Bo Ryan and he's a one off. He's a one of one. There's not another Bo Ryan out there and Grey Guard's not him. So Grey Guard's got to do it a little differently. And it feels like if you guys ever watched the movie Multiplicity where uh, it's Michael Keaton is the star and he's too busy. So he makes a copy of himself and then the copy makes a copy and because they're trying to divide their tasks, but the copy of the copy just isn't quite as sharp as the original. Uh, but you can't copy Bo Ryan is my point. You got to be original uh, and you can take a lot from him, but go, uh, Greg Gard needs to adjust more. And I wonder if it's a combination of, he's just really kind of stubborn and it he, he tries to be too Bo Ryan and you can't be Bo Ryan because there's only one of those. So yeah, it's, it's a good point demise. And, Again, trying to get to the root of it, I think it has a lot to do with who his mentor was, how his mentor did it. And again, you just can't copy that guy. He's a Picasso, man. There's not many like him. Um, this one's from Andy Kirsten. I need someone that's for keeping Greg Gard around to explain to me why. I just don't get it. And this is what I see a lot of Andy and thing. I mean, not you put this on Twitter, so this isn't sent to me. I, I'm, I see a lot of people just exasperated at this point. And just asking for the why, the why do we keep him? And I'll, I'll just say he wins 63% of his games. He's the two-time coach of the year in the Big Ten. Now, maybe that's not a good enough reason. And frankly, I think if you lose the rest of these games and you lose out and you flame out in the tournament, I don't know if that is a good enough reason anymore. I, I truthfully don't. But that is the why. And whether you think that's valid or not, I mean, there's more, and there's more to it, right? He runs a clean program. Uh, I, I think he generally recruits pretty good kids. He has won the Big Ten a couple times. Like there are real things you can point to on a resume that say that's why you keep him. And again, those things maybe you have a shelf life on things. Maybe you don't consider the Sweet Sixteen appearances really worthwhile anymore because they were with Bo Ryan guys. Uh, maybe you don't consider winning sixty three percent of your games, sixty two percent of your games, a good enough reason when you feel like the ceiling is limited. That's all fair too. Um, but if you do want some reasons, I, I would say those are the reasons you keep them. And that's what people will will say uh, for those that are are in favor of keeping Greg, uh, Greg Gard. And I still am as of right now for the record. But, man, you got to get some stuff rolling here. This is from the right winger uh, over on Twitter. He said, I am sad. Fire Greg Gard. And, again, I think it just goes back to the the apathy of the program right now. Like it feels like the wheels have come off and it feels like. There's not a ton of answers. And yeah, it's tough to be a fan in that moment. Um, all right, we're going to wrap it up there. On Wisconsin, as always, really, really do appreciate everybody tuning in. Listen, spring football is exciting. The new calendar you're flipping over into football is exciting. I cannot wait to get those practice reports. And we're going to continue diving more and more into football. A bunch of great guests coming up, as always. Really do appreciate every single person tuning in to Locked On Badgers. Um, Send me any comments you got, any questions, and we'll we'll talk about them. We'll chop them up on Wisconsin, and we'll talk later.